Crypto friends, that's right, it's the Crypto Sniper coming back at you. Uh, yesterday we recorded a video. Uh, by the time you're watching this one, it'll be two days ago. In fact, the last 10 days, we've been kind of concerned about Bitcoin. Uh, and in fact, over on the Twitter sphere, I warned that I'd actually got flat uh, a week or so ago for a number of uh, reasons that have continued to grow. And in actual fact, uh, I ended up doing a Twitter thread today which uh, I released, uh, and as it went out, roughly as the, video, the last video went out, which was delayed until 3 o'clock Panama time, um, shortly after that video, uh, and shortly after that Twitter thread, the crypto market started to spill. And there were a number of reasons why. So I'm going to share uh, my thinking. And uh, this is a key thing about leading a community. We've actually got some great trades and I made some money on the short side in a small level. I didn't want to go too big and I didn't over egg it. Uh, and uh, also there were limits on how uh, much you could short. But there are real trading opportunities inside this. But for most people watching this, just preserving you from losses is the key game. And that's what I aim to do for my community. In fact, I was up until about three in the morning and I was looking at this in every possible way. And I came to the conclusion to reiterate that despite the possibility as ever that I could be wrong and on balance of probabilities, I felt that we would short term run into some downside uh, that could change the dynamics for quite an extended period and that the macro world was starting to lean again on crypto. Um, and so much so that today I'm doing a follow up to yesterday's video um, and we can now uh, discuss what actually happened given that we've now had the first uh, element of a spill and revisit how those charts have changed since our earlier warning and since we first started talking about tethered dominance. The amazing thing I found in the, uh, the Twitter world is that very few people give credit. And there's no one else that I know is talking about tethered dominance. There is no one else that has shown a tethered dominance chart in any of the spheres. And then one or two guys have started to uh, talk about it and then they say, but thanks to the crypto sniper and great respect to them for uh, sourcing us um, for bringing this through. Because when crypto money runs bullishly into tether it is not a bullish environment for crypto generally so let's have a look at that uh, twitter thread and i want to highlight this particular chart that was done by luke martin was being talking about kevin kelly comes from delphi digital they shared it first in actual fact uh, and it's the bitcoin halvening trends and when you look at this, it's very, very tempting to be swayed in uh, bullishly. So essentially the halvening is at every white line over there uh, when it's expected. Uh, and the troughs and the peaks are the red lines and the green line. So there's your halvening. We know we've got a halvening 2024. And typically, once you've halvened, uh, you get a run up to a peak. This is your best part of your bull market there right the way that would be to 69 in the end there past the 64 and uh lately just before that into the 2017 no that's 2013 i apologize bull market however there's an interim period in the run up to the halvening which in most instances so far which is what he's referring can we go three out of three in most instances in between is broadly uh, bullish so you're going from that low to that high but it's not yet the runaway bull that is the one that took you to 20k in 2017 December and took you to 64 stroke 69k uh, in 2021 so the temptation is to look at this period here between the low assuming that's the low to the next period and assume that generally net you're going to be up it's very very tempting on that basis and i put a counter argument to this in other words to me this is too much bull bias overall and i'm going to take you through the thread that detailed why we say um, it could be different this time and that you're not getting three out of three in terms of what's going to be going on in the market. Uh, so my take is different to this halvening argument made with the below chart. I'll make my case below that in the thread, he says. 
so we'll have a little look at the thread as it unwinds and see what I actually said. First of all, you have to bear in mind, and I've prepared quite a few charts for this, so these images are hopefully easy to read, is that in actual fact, it was less about the halvening cycle and more about the dollar effect on everything. So Bitcoin bull stages have coincided with dollar weakness. It's no surprise there. And bear markets mainly on USD periods of strength. That means they are antagonistic. That means good for one, bad for the other, bad for one, good for the other. Yep, so you get that. It's a bit like bond. Uh, and so when we have a look at this period, you'll see coming in, and I took the exact same period of his chart, which started at the back end of 13, uh, second half of 13, and went, and here you can see 2014. Coming into that period, I wanted you to focus on the top half of this chart, which is the USD. The top half is the USD, and I want to highlight bull and bear moments in the USD generally with regards to its peaks and troughs and for you to see how that's transpired on the Bitcoin market. So essentially coming into this 13 into the end of 14 period actually you were uh, a bear market on the dollar. You were a bear market on the dollar. So we'll go with uh, a color we haven't used too much of. The orange there, you're a bear market on the dollar. What was actually happening for Bitcoin? You had a nice run up into a Bitcoin high during 2014. So from the beginning, uh, well from halfway through the 13 into 2014, till the end uh, of 14 and the beginning, of the, in fact, my apologies, to the trough of the dollar. So the, the, the pink lines are the troughs and peaks of the dollar. To the trough of the dollar, you were trading largely up on Bitcoin and you were trading down into the trough on the dollar. So you can see straight away that's the adversarial. The bearishness on the dollar does lend support to more speculation, more tendency to chase in to the risk on environment and particularly uh, Bitcoin. Then we went into one of the strongest spells of dollar dominance. That's over here. So we'll pivot to the pink. You can see from that trough in a very short time frame to a very strong high. So this is what got denominated by me as a strong for an FX market that was a very strong bull market. Remember, they don't move like cryptos. They're much lower beta. I'll be referring to that point again. So much lower overall uh, beta, but despite that, a very strong move. This was a continued bear period, the whole period through there till the highs of the dollar. A localized high, it wasn't the absolute high, but the key localized high, that was the end of the very clear move. This was a bearish period for Bitcoin. Again, the relationship holding in a new stage. Then we got uh, probably the only area that I've chosen to use a third color in, and that was a kind of broadening structure, essentially flat. It was a little bit up, it was a little bit down, it was a little bit up. If you took it from the localized high to the next localized high, you had a mild ascent. You had a mild ascent. However, in that period, you descended, you rose, you descended, you rose, you were flat, and you finished fairly strong. What happened during there? The theme, given the length of the bear market of Bitcoin, and it had had quite a lengthy bear market, don't forget it had peaked in 13, and you are now into 15. So it had really, really worked off a lot of its bearishness and it started a recovery. So in a relatively benign period for the dollar, a little bit up, a little bit down, a little bit down, a little bit up, a little bit down, finishing slightly higher, you got the beginning seeding of a bull market. So providing the dollar is not antagonizing exceptionally, and, it's, and Bitcoin is fresh after a lengthy bear, you can get a movement up. And so you did heading in to 2017. The 2017 run into 18 was the big, big move. I think during 17, you could still get Bitcoin at around $700 at its very lowest point, but it was in and around 1,000. It finished at 20. You can see during that period, a very strong bear pullback 
from the localized high to the localized low bear pullback again bull run dollar bear uh, my apologies bear dollar bull run uh, bitcoin then you got an extended spell of dollar being broadly bullish but not excessively so but in a sustained grinding up basis so you that was your low that was your final high and you made sustained upside process and you were unable to match the 20k high you got as high as 14 at your best moment and in actual fact during that period you had the events of March 2020 so that was the events of March 2020 you had a blow off strength in the dollar and you actually had a spill which is not shown by the line chart uh, but actually on a wick level so this is a monthly line chart that we're looking at on both of them it takes some of the noise out but it hides the fact that there was actually extreme volatility here so this was a difficult period you started at just heading down from 20k you never got anywhere near that so that was an extended bear by time frame so it was a lengthy period it was the end of 17 into 18 all the way into 20. So you got over two years with a fake bull that got you 14k and then a pullback all in this steady grinding higher dollar period um, so you can see and was lengthy by extended through time then we had the sell-off as a result of all the printing that took the dollar index from in around 102s which was where it was or hundreds 90, uh, 100s ish right the way down to 89 this was a bear period six or seven trillion was created for the global response to the, the event that may not be mentioned um, still killing people today pilots uh, dropping dead thanks to that cure of theirs um, all over the place uh, just had one stop in panama that was miami san diego anyway let's not take that route shall we but anyway the events of that very bearish the dollar it fell super far and that is your run up from in and around the seven and a half eights nines right the way through to 64,000 high and started to pull a little bit of the way back uh, on its first pullback but it was a strong bull you went from seven and even if you finished around here at about 35 36 let's say it was far down um you would still significantly up that was a strong bull period then we had our first cup uh we didn't have our first cup we had our uh dixie reversal that was called by us on our traditional market channel market sniper channel and referred to regularly on this channel as the dollar index first uh set up in a new trend that would see at least 111 run in the end that ran up to 114 at a line level on a monthly close you got up to just around 112. this was a very strong dollar bull market you went from there up to there that was very close to emulating this one was shorter and more violent but this was a very lengthy one and took you a long long way the lows of the dollar index here were in around 89 and a half and they ran all the way or 80 yeah 89 and a half ish all the way to 114 intraday and week with closes above 114 not at the monthly level did you get a close that high super strong bull what's that done you got your early part you got your 69 and then you've been nothing but down this has been a bear bear market a deeply unpleasant bear market you had so much retail chasing momentum that initially as you just got started on the bull there's lags there's leads and lags so when you're still in a bull market and there's still a retail frenzy you can continue to go up while the dollar strengthens for a while but very quickly it catches up so there was a bit of leagues and lags you got your 69 you failed to go any higher the dollar was definitely getting stronger bear market down 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 strong bull market up so now that brings us to the period we are in the peak that was 114 that on the monthly close didn't get through 112 uh, and how we've been since then we got our final low quite early in uh, no not yet 23 in around November that is 
So that would be all the events and the meltdown out of FTX, etc. So you are still a little bit down and then you've had at its highest point a 2x from the 15 and a half to 31 there. That was all a company during this period that dollar had one of its harshest sell-offs in ages. Uh, in a short time, that is, for the time frame. So this is a very short time frame, and this was super steep. And again, this is, gets a bit belied. This is log scaled, and in actual fact, you had 14, 114 at one point during the month. So if you're not using the monthly line close, this is even higher than it looks. So you had a really brutal sell-off in the dollar. We recall this well. You still went into the lows 15 it took a while in the same way you continued to go up for a bit before you got strung bear you continued to go down even though the dollar was re-rating but eventually you got your uh, boots on and you ran up to 31. however since then we've had a meltdown into the low that tested the 100 level on the dixie and since then you have been in a recovery dixie and that for me is a possible headwind from the US dollar and generally apart from some leads and lags when every retail mania is still chasing in and they don't understand the relationship and they're, they're still buying and hitting the stack regardless of the macro situation chasing in for the 69 in a, a strengthening dollar period like that eventually they get eaten as it continues 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 and you roll into the bear collapse so we are running into a potential dollar reversal that I'll get into in the very next post. So let's have a look at that. This to me has got far more relevance in terms of telling you what Bitcoin does next. The goal that I serve my community, we stay up until three in the morning, really scratching my head to try to get these decisions right. So they get the news first every time. And I've been warning them for the last 10 days and I've been vacillating. I'm uncomfortable. Mm, should I get back in? Uncomfortable. Whenever I get into that iffy period I really knuckle down try see if we can solve this conundrum and reasserted for second third or fourth time that uh, overall you should overlook the possibility of the BlackRock ETF and you should play safe so let's have a look at that dollar so dollar is a key determinant of Bitcoin when people are in fear they are in dollar out of Bitcoin easily liquidated it's not like a house or a home it's not like a pension fund to cash out. It's much easier done. So right now, D is turning. We actually had a very bearish, and this was making us optimistic for Bitcoin. And then you get the people. This is what I get on the comments. Uh, in fact, this is a classic example of people who don't understand. So we get a, a, and I have to deal with this because we get a lot of it. And these people don't grow. So it's blockage on their grow. This is not, this is not ego or anything on my side. It's don't be that guy, and if you are that guy, understand why you don't understand. Then you can grow and learn. Otherwise, you're just puking for no reason. So here you get it. Let's just give the example of a typical. I'm going to leave the thread for a while. Here you go. Gold and silver, W1BTC. Long short, long short crypto, gold, energy, uranium. Sure, mate. Guess you're wrecked. Welcome back to retail, bro. LMFA. You're just chasing non-stop, short, good, ba 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 ba, incomprehensible English. So um, that quality of uh, comment does not understand dynamic environments. You could come to a situation that someone like Gareth, who was circumspect about 30 and 31k, in my opinion, was wrong when we had an inverted head and shoulder. Now comes back to being right and and prudent. And that is the luck of the, the the degree of the draw. So, you know, fair uh, uh, play uh, so far to him. I think now it's coming more to his scenario than before. When you had the reversal of Bitcoin on the head and shoulder, you should have been looking at the reversal and he was not acknowledging that. So I'm going to, so in my sense, uh, he was inaccurate there. And as a result, that is why I don't uh, uh, overpraise, but the, the key point he got right and his concern about, for example, the uh, Bitcoin at the 30k mark, eventually, if you don't move forward, there's a problem. And if you don't move forward and there's a problem, it becomes uh, manifest. So you have to keep progressing. So when you're here, 
you are more in good shape than when you've spent the whole of July, the rest of June, and half of August actually going sideways. Confidence is right to wane in this situation. And we drew a number of things that concerned us. The marginally higher high versus this high. The fact that you're extending for five long, a lot longer. The basing ascending grind line. So what should have happened is you had a short flag. Let's do it in blue. Short flag pullback. And you should have resumed and gone up. The longer you go on that you don't go up and you leave this high behind and this is just a staging point uh, and it now becomes a long-term resting point the more of a concern it becomes so overall you flex back to a worry and then you get the squeeze and we predicted this and we spoke about it in the community and i said this is my priority that it comes down here now incidentally what does that mean you've run the 25 almost what was the low Let's see what that low was. Are we done? I don't know for today. We'll see. Low was 25,150. It's very, very close to our neckline low uh, that was the upside head and shoulder. And now you have a concern where you have a left possible, a marginally higher point, a very brutal sell off. So you get technical rallies here to give you a right shoulder. And then you end up with a left, uh, a head and shoulder straight back down using almost the identical neckline that was created for the upside one that i've covered many many times for which you can still see the right shoulder there so what's ended up happening is you had an inverted we were right to call it the lack of cracking on given time has now set up a, a normal head and shoulder possibly the other way that hasn't happened yet we're waiting for the right shoulder but there's a good chance now and as a result that negates the potential of the original inverted so you should have biased bull and then you should revert back if you on any level of reasonable time frame however you um you know other people have the other reasons and there might be other reasons and at the end of the day it only matters if you're right so i think he gets some applause uh for showing uh, concern about the 30k uh, we know there's a big flag to the left here and that's why we said you would pause and it will take some undoing here if it's to be undone and if you've failed to move forward this is where it'll happen and once you've broken it you'll break it with momentum uh, to the upside if it's bullish so we now know which one it is I think I think we have to start considering the more bearish scenario and what has happened macro is caught up with everything so let's just show you uh, that draw to the other side and as I say this is the quality and the effort we go to to make sure we try get the big decisions right to not take a loss on your investment pot for example, XRP, had you sold it, you had anywhere of an opportunity, our targets were 71 and it traded as high as 91, that you could have got out. It's traded in, I understand, right down to the low uh, 40s. We'll double check that for the low, just to make sure I'm correct. But this is always going to be a challenging period, this area here. Why? It was a big flag on the way down with the bearish side of things. So. It is turned into uh, resistance and it's quite ironic that actually you now may have one head and shoulder to the upside that made part progress only to be countered which is an inverted one potentially by a larger one uh, not a larger one around the same size I would say we'll have to see what we get on the right shoulder but if you take that high which is just shy of 32 and you run it down and we agree the neckline is going to be in and around 25,000 that just missed technically making the exact 25,000 you've got in and around seven thousand dollars projected to the downside from 25 which could quite safely take you to 18,000 plus uh, to the downside um, and that will then turn this entire period into a weak period we also put uh, just a rally and we also pointed out that uh, apart from the marginally higher high, you had this basing ascending grind line, which was a real concern. And I drew every scenario, even where that's in of itself, like uh, head and shoulders, but on a, an incline. Um, we don't draw those. It's not a head and shoulders. 
um, but the rising wedge in there, etc., etc. So now you have that triggering event. It's broken to the downside. Let's go back to the thread, though, um, because it was interesting. So that dollar index. So that dollar index chart, we've dealt with that. Is it likely, and it's invalidated the 97. So during this period, the reason I went to highlight the people that said, you're not allowed to change your mind. If you have a dollar index that is spilling and could make 97 after a run, and that's your expectation on a chart, that is highly Bitcoin bullish supportive for your 42.5K run. If it runs the 100 and invalidates as it did, that pattern that changes the outlook for the dollar immensely and a failed pattern to the downside that disqualifies itself is actually bullish you normally continue it's usually part of a final sell-off or a capitulation you get the near the end of a trend a pattern fail and it's like a, a gravestone at uh, on the top of a hill you know for climbing that hill it's just gone you didn't you're done you couldn't make it um, and that shows, you know, a death of that bearishness. So what that typically could mean is, yes, you might get a pullback and you'll get a little bit of a bid to come back into Bitcoin. But on the longer term, I would expect dollar to continue to go up. So why is the dollar going to go up? Now we need to do, talk, talk about other markets a little bit and discuss this so that you can also join me in uh, having the best understanding of our logic. And here it is. Bond market yields are increasing. That has got to do initially with the, the, the official story is the Fed talking about inflation and how diligent they're going to be and da 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 and RPI and all of these aspects. The real answer is there's too much debt. They're running massive deficits. They've projected 1.85 trillion to run the country in overspend on their tax receipts. So that's how much they're spending more than what they're getting in. And as a result, there's so much new debt guaranteed to come on that people that are holders of debt don't want it anymore because the capital value is going down. And when lots of people sell the long-term debt and the short-term debt and the medium-term debt and every various age groups to varying degrees, what you end up getting is decreasing capital values in the debt, which means increasing implied rates. So the failure of the system, and people, uh, I get these counter view opinions. I disagree. The rates are going up because the economy is so strong. We can take it. It's designed to take the heat out of this economy. We're so strong. The heat out of the economy, when the biggest tweets trending are Canadians and Americans that are middle class and single mums that, that are on 45 grand a year and can't make ends meet. Um, no, that's not boom town for middle America or lower middle America or blue collar America. I can tell you that uh, when the biggest song that everybody's watching is a ginger haired guy uh, talking about shit money and sh uh, shit uh, jobs and terrible uh, cost of living and barely able to make it with his two old dogs and his self prepping farm in the background. Let me tell you when that is the key theme that is not boom town. That is not Boomtown. Boomtown was in 95 through to 99 when everyone was leaving jobs for 20% increases in pay and taking their budgies and their dogs as pets because uh, bosses want to keep employees and didn't want to upset anybody. That was a Boomtown for labor employment. This ain't that. This ain't that at all. Um, so rates are going up because the debt is devaluing. Why is the debt devaluing? Because there's a plethora of it. And for all that the eye can see, there's a much bigger pipe load of it coming down the pipe. So how much do you want to buy it? Or would you rather get out of it on the basis it's absolutely proliferated like sand on a beach? So debt is a problem and it's getting higher. So you're going to get squeezed. I've warned countless times. People's head are going to be held under the water for longer under the, the monetary policy situation. They will be absolutely waterboarded till they choke. And it isn't because they can take it and they're strong. It's because the guy is going to use the excuse of, well, last time we let you off too early and you told us a pack of fibs. So now we're going to near drown you. And that's the inflation narrative. 
They set themselves up to fight the fact that they were late killing inflation and never took it seriously to now be super vigilant at your cost and pain. This is your pain meter. The bond markets are going up in yield terms and going down in valuation terms. And the reason for that is there's too much of it. They're not worth the paper they're written on and they could end up going a whole bunch lower. Go and look at the market sniper and our TLT videos on the long-term ETFs that you can short. They all capitulate in looking at new lows as yields go up. So then you get uh, rate rises that are likely to take the market into a risk-off environment. That's the risk-off environment. And now you have bellwether stock Apple sell off after meeting its revenue and exceeding its earnings. But it's priced for perfection and then things are starting to catch up. Go and click on the revenue, both the revenue met the number and the earnings were beyond and they expected a beat. They expect big beats. But the problem is they're not getting those beats. Why aren't you rushing to buy out a new iPhone and update your Mac and get a, a later version? There's a camera that's got a few more pixels on it than the one you have now. Why haven't you rushed out to do it? Because there's a goddamn reason. You don't have money to waste and what you got for now is getting you by. That is why. That is the facts why and that is not a super strong robust retail and this is the beginning of a turn down on a bellwether stock in the NASDAQ composite itself which is a cash generating juggernaut uh, and of course part of the dark state but you'll leave that uh, little mention to the, uh, to the side. So rates rising, risk off, bellwether tech not going up, not good enough. Meeting your revenue target and beating your earnings is no longer good enough for how you are priced. That is a warning. That is a warning that priced for perfection is not no longer being met. So Bitcoin, having not really overperformed the stock market, is now on the way down. Um, here's that NASDAQ chart, by the way. Let's just show you. Spiller, Spiller, it's an absolute thriller turning over. So it's not just Apple, it's a lot. You can go have a look at it. So that is the same theme. We are risking off after a strong year. You began 23 at our head and shoulder target low. There's the right shoulder of the head and shoulder we call. You rallied up to that level that we drew as a key level for a number of reasons before. You then squeezed higher. You started a key squeeze higher. And you went low vol, you squeezed and squeezed higher. And now all of a sudden you're returning. And you have not yet cleared the right shoulder for all the David Hunter fans. Never mind even got to the head level, which is where he started talking about a further 60% increase in four months. That was now a back end of 21 long gone. So let's move on to the next story. Crypto is a high beta. How has... The dollar strength and the dollar's subsequent weakness and Bitcoin's weakness and subsequent strength performed relative to the usual moves. So normally you should be getting much more upside gearing on crypto than an FX currency. And you can see here what I've drawn is the peak of Bitcoin over there. Let's do it in pink because it'll clash nicely. Transgender pink. We don't want text. We'll have a line. Uh, at the 69k high, right the way down, the final low, November 15 and a half, the first time. You were very low vol and pretty along the bottom most of that, but that was the first point. During that period, your dollar climbed quite some way. It was in and around the 96, and it was already on the way back down, uh, crashing through 106.5. So during that bull period, which already began reversal, you were still bottoming out while it's, everyone was so negative and so had enough. The dollar was already selling off and being a bit of support, but it was just overwhelmed with exhausted sellers at the bottom. So it sold off a little bit longer. You can see that. Now, how much did it bounce? What was the bounce back ability of Bitcoin? And you'll see, even at its absolute low, 15, it only made 31,000 uh, over here, 15 and a half to 31. That's around a 2x, which is actually pretty poor. At this point of the absolute low of the dollar after that spill, 
Bitcoin was at 30,253. It had traded a little higher. And actually from the peak of the dollar, you were at 19,000. So peak dollar, you're at 19. You continued on Bitcoin to skid lower, the lag effect as I've described before, even though the dollar began to turn down. So it had gone from 112 to 106, which is a huge drop already, and you were still just in misery mode. That was the effect of FTX, by the way, and all the love and light and joy that Sam Bankman freed, the fraudulent thief uh, brought by stealing from everyone. Um, anyway, subsequently, the dollar's gone from, and that was an intra-month high hitting 114 plus, it's gone from 113 down to a low of 99.95. And this is all you could. The point I'm making is that's a limp reaction by Bitcoin for the scale of dollar index correction. If I told you that the dollar was going to fall from 114 down to 99, it was going to break the 100 level. You were going to drop 14 big points on the dollar index. I would have expected at 19,000 for the dollar to at least have been through 45 and possibly more. For that scale of unwind in the dollar. Go and look at the previous sell-offs in the dollar and how much bang for your buck. Particularly after a major bear market at 69. That was not the lowest multiple from the previous. 69 is only three and a half times the previous high. Three and a half times the previous high. So the least spectacular high, a lengthy by time period. November, you're at a year later bear for the low. And the best you got was about 80% on 19,000 or a 2x from absolute low to absolute high. That's poor. And can I, I will be pointing out how the alts have not performed during that period. Similar to July 19. That point will be coming uh, following this uh, shortly. So as a high beta, which means a multiplier to that level of unwind in the dollar, that was just not good enough. This is warning of relative weakness. It didn't get enough bang for the buck. Now what is happening is the dollar is of course rallying and is back at 103 and Bitcoin has been struggling, holding its level, struggling, holding its level, trying to hold its level, hold its level and is now, today, as we released this thread before that and the video that we recorded was running and it followed the crash followed after the video, even though we recorded it a day before, and even though for the last week we've been warning that actually it should be down, that there's weakness coming. So you can see that this is not a very strong setup right now, and if we continue on the upside, this relative underperformance on the upside could turn into some nasty underperformance on the downside. It has shown it is weak. So let's have a look at volatility and why we knew as much as you can know, because nobody knows anything, why we expected some degree of expansive move and why I say the sell-off you got, which will now be yesterday, but is today for me as I record this, is not yet over. That is my opinion, and here's why I say that. When you do a Bollinger Band on Bitcoin, we were famous for being the standalone only bear in the room on an inverted HVF over there. Everyone said 6,000 was the low in the period of 2018 going into November. We actually had a theory weekend. We live streamed and said it will fall. And we said you can eat short ETH or uh, Bitcoin. We were short both. And we did exceedingly well on a devastating loss. We closed at 3.7. The eventual low was in and around 3.2. I remember these explicitly. That was a sell brought to you by the Bollinger Band pinch. So there's two events occurring on this chart that you're not seeing and understanding. The pinch of the Bollinger Band, this intestine, these are all the most extreme pinches. There, 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 here, and right there. The blue line was right under this. That's how narrow it was at the time. And we said, it's a sell. 
that was a buy this was your first cup gold nugget it was a buy you have the whole pattern like that to the left to the left earlier we detailed that we essentially called every single one of these correctly and i wanted to get this one uh, accurate too and i'm sitting here today to say yes we did on this Bollinger Band, that was a sell. Nobody was short with us during that uh, 2018. Everyone was said we're done. The first cup gold nugget bull uh, was very bullish. This was off the lows, super low volatility was a bull. That was a bull uh, and started the rally. Don't forget the dollar was selling off from 114 and coming at its hardest rate down during that period. It had to be a bull. It was such a tailwind from the dollar. And this was our call for a sell. So that is the Bollinger Band pinch. I'm also showing you a second aspect on volatility. And that was on the 30 level here. The extremity low vol. So this is more just extreme low vol as measured by the historical volatility index. That turned into a buy. It was a very good buy entry this turned into a buy it was a tiny bit early it got you in there um, and it was build, built off this previous cooling you got a little mild move a little mild pullback it got you in there excellent entry this was a classic sell it got you in on the flag which is the flag i've just shown you which is resistance that is battling to be overcome that gareth noticed and deserves credit for um as well so we said you're either going to smash this with resistance or it turns into a localized high point and fail then that was a buy you didn't get a reading here on the historical low vol this has been drifting off virtually down to what is going to be uh, our key triggering point that has only happened once twice three times before since 2018 to nearly the end of 23 so in a five-year period you're about to make your fourth appearance and that is why we said this is going to sell now this is a chart that has now been superseded by events and you will have seen that this is now traded to the 26,000s on uh, bitcoin and quite a bit lower on other tokens so that was the other thing is something going to big going to happen yes what was the call the call was sell the call was sell and the volatility tells you a highly expansive move is going to return too long too quiet too still for too long historical volatility bollinger band pinch both do two different ways of doing the same thing they're not two separate reasons they're two different ways of looking at the same core concept we are hunt volatility funnel traders volatility the ironing out of volatility is exceedingly interesting to us. That's why I stay up late at night to try to protect as many community members to get the call right and say, guys, stand down. You'll buy back more for later. And if you don't understand it's actually managing the losses that makes you wealthy, then you don't understand this game. You think it's all about buying the pumper mental that goes up and getting the thing up. It's no goddamn use. You'll give 95% of it back on the round trip through the next bull and bear market because you don't understand that not taking a loss is more valuable defensively than uh, making the gains. Staying in the game and protecting your capital is the most important thing you can do. And this is what traders don't get it's all about the big longs in the bull market and the mega moons and the fast money because that's when the dopamine hits the back of the brain that's when you feel you're the biggest smartest uh, big swinging dick hero in the land uh, for being long during long season when and when it comes to bear season you hand it all back time and time again and that's what i'm here to do for people who understand the value of that and it has no price Big enough, let me tell you, despite it uh, being a product of my own serving. Protecting capital has no price big enough for you. Because it's the difference between staying in the game and another burnout cycle that ad nauseum 90% of people involved in crypto are trading. So I'm preaching right now. And you can take it or you can leave it. But that's a fact as hard as a cow sitting in a field. Okay. Um, so the economy is clearly in a recession. We've shown the recession indicators. Go and see uh, some of the stuff. We did an interview with Tavi with his charts that will show you absolutely tax receipts. 
Uh, the huge, we covered the dollar index. This went out weeks ago that this is a turn now on the dollar. It's a concern. The fact that this is likely to end in a demand destroying event. In our sub stack, under the market sniper, you've been warned clearly with other people's great charts and our own that there is the demand destroying event is getting much, much closer and that things are disorderly unsafe. This is the lowest draw on the corporate bond yield versus the Fed funds rate. It's not pricing in the risk of corporate uh, failure. I've shown the palladium chart. All of this came out really. Not recession, recession. You're in the not recession, recession. Every time this called the recession, including the one they never called in 2016, and all these recessions are far bigger than they have you believe. Can you believe 2000 was that thin a recession, start and finish? That's you get the lies, damn lies and statistics. This was an entire recessionary period. Entire recessionary period. The dot com was devastating. The subprime was a lost decade and a half. Let me tell you, from the tops of 2007, you were still wrecked in 14. You were still wrecked in 15. And then you stumbled into the Shanghai Accord in China because China was trying to create heat in the global economy when everyone else was on their knees and was ramping debt like never before, buying all the copper, building all the whatevers. That is the only recession that's not shown that I've inserted in here. And then the not recession, recession with another major sell-off. So we've been given every indicator in front of you on the market sniper in the Substack warning you that this is not good. This is not good and the truth is not being told that there is real damage in the land at the moment right now. And that's where you get. So the economy is in recession. That's what it means. There's the Substack. The debt outlook going forward, another 185 trillion. Do you want to buy that for your pension? Do you want to receive diminished dollars where inflation is the technique and they lie to you about the full rate and they keep changing the basket of goods and you be the holder and you get that income while they keep printing more of it and looking for a new fool like you to take the next one because you've spent all your money? Do you really think that? Retail crypto are wrecked. This is what we're showing you. The volume looks very similar to the BTC account, but you are through 3 billion in 24 hour trading. Right now, you are much, much lower. You're at about 1, 2, 50, maybe tops, 12, 1.2 billion. So you touched 3.1, you're at 1.2. You are wrecked. The retail crypto guy is low. He is low. This is flat. This is flat. This is not a log scale. Uh, this is taken from the Zoomable statistic chart. This is huge destruction of the retail crypto dude. And that's why they need money management. And that's why they won't do it. They'll wait till the next moon cycle. They'll repeat it all again just to have a few joyous moments of pure bliss using lots of leverage and flicking a few right uh, and then giving it all back and being liquidated. They really want that. If you really want that, keep making sure you just watch the channel and you keep you know, uh, leveraging to the hilt and you don't hassle about money management because that is trading. Protecting capital is trading. Low leverage, stop losses, protecting capital is wealth building. If you are serious, you have to understand that. So other things we highlighted uh, outside of the ETF news that m would be the only long shot savior that I could see. My take uh, is Bitcoin's corrective downside risks outweigh the odds for upside. The 14K run in 2019 is an example of such a case. Many alts didn't participate in that. Many such examples today. So, so far the bull turn, we've had more and more time go by and the, 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 the big cap alts haven't really responded. And I choose a very serious uh, man in Charles um, and the Ada Cardano community. And this is your pumper mentals high, around about $3.10. Uh, and you write down here, this is your final low, which occurred quite recently. You actually made a new low. A lot of others actually bottomed here. You made a new low and you're barely off. You are barely above the point where everyone else low. 
This is absolute key that we are not getting the turn. Now, initially, Bitcoin runs first, and it's okay for that to happen. But it's not okay since the beginning of the year to be sitting virtually at the doorstep of September and it hasn't happened. That is a market run that's not happening for a lot of tokens that are slipping, slipping and slipping. And he's not just the only one, uh, Cardano and Charles's project. So the money is not running in. So then you have a look at two bonus points. You look at the currencies. So BRICS are doing a currency launch. The BRICS are going to do. In Joburg, my main hood. I'm a Joburg. I'm a 16 tenner. I should have a tattooed on my forearm. Good old coming from the east of Joburg. Rough and tough where they used to be, I tell you. Um, and they're going to Joburg. They're going to brag about their new currency. And what do you think the US dollar is going to do? Exactly what they did when they felt threatened by the emergence of a major currency like the euro. That's what they're going to do. And what was that, you ask? The currency, the physical notes launched on 2000. Um, they were at 140, yeah, 1.4, 140 cents, just below over here. As they were coming up to launch date of the currency, this is what happened. The chief chimp wanted to show who was boss in the currency realm, and you fell from roughly 140 to 83 cents over the space of five years leading into the introduction of the euro before eventually you got the first upside hvf in a new trend quite a bit later in and around as you ran into 2003 as the eurozone was now relatively cheap now some might say the eurozone were too ambitious with their entry level whatever the case may be when it was coming and it was show time the existing alpha male didn't like to be threatened and came beating his chest. So this is exactly what I suspect will be likely in any discussion and launch and any new and bugs on the new thing. Uh, the old thing suddenly looks far more reliable when the new thing arrives and better value, etc., etc. So the dollar will come out fighting is my expectation in terms of this. And when you think about the debt situation, the absolute proliferation, the fact that less and less people and dumb pension funds want to buy it, some will be obligated at some point, I'm sure if they're not already, but you're going to get a hot welcome for anything coming out of the BRICS and it will be far from perfect. And once some of the details are being confirmed, it actually could even be a damp squid in some senses. I don't think there's going to be any convertibility to metals. I don't think they can afford to do that. Um, so that is one big problem. So what else have we got for you? Um, well, we've got a couple of other things uh, on that. Let's just talk, seeing as we've went into the BRICS weeds, let's talk about China. So the USD CNH is doing this. So it's having a bit of a pullback today. But let me say this much. China looks like it's in trouble. It looks like it's in trouble. And this is a strengthening of the dollar from the range down here. And when you consider how tightly and sensitive this pair is, it doesn't have huge volatility generally. It's in a lot tighter range. Why? Because trade is taking place. Minor moves can cause big disruptions for effectiveness of products, etc. This is dollar dominance. Now, it might be taking a, a pullback, just like Bitcoin will get a rally right now and the dollar will back off and they want those yields down for a day or two. But longer run, the yields go higher. We showed you the targets up to 5%. We've covered this. If China is weak, a lot of money. Go and look at the Tron tweets. USDT on the Tron network equals Ethereum. That is going to be China and the East. Many of the countries and the nations trying to get money out using the Tron network uh, in there. So if the weakness of the Chinese currency could end up in dollar stable coin on something like the Tron network for our Koreans. The USD Korean one is getting weaker. The USD CNH is getting weaker. Don't mention the USD JPY uh, for getting weaker because that's getting weaker. Uh, and then we think, well, OK, the currency is getting weaker, but, you know, the US stock market blew the door off in terms of its upside. How's the Hang Seng done? Well, here's the Hang Seng since the year started, guys. Here's February, roughly. You're in January. There's your top out. Down, down, down. February, March, all the way. 
minor rally down 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 new low rally swing rally swing break down here right now and selling off again expect a bit of a rally uh, and congestion but new lows higher highs higher lows no it's lower lows and lower highs all the way down and you've just broken a bit of a structure for downside there so i don't feel too bullish the Hang Seng particularly or their currency as I say if you expect tomorrow for those things both to be down you're wrong they're all overextended right now so they all could go the opposite way for a bit but long run what is the money showing you on the macro this ain't good go and grab this thread hit the, the like uh, I've put a lot of effort in preparing charts to help you understand this so that you're not like that guy who goes first you said long now you go short First you say be investment pot in and now you say investment pot off. The whole game about money management is recognizing as things change. The lack of further upside, the lack of overbecoming the 3132k range shows that it will be bigger resistance and that the inverted head and shoulder pattern where we normally assume success. So our default assumption is success when it triggers, particularly when it triggered as well as it did with such a strong candle, is that it will perform. So our bias remains bull until such time as time elapsed, lack of progress, marginally higher high, rising wedge, squeezing volatility, now looking like a bear squeeze, domestic uh, US demand destroying events, loss of upside on the equity market, everything that was positive and supportive suddenly turning, well now Bitcoin you've left it too long, now you get dragged down. That's why it changes. And that's why smart people who understand technical analysis and changes recognize why someone's opinion changes. The right thing was to be long and the right thing is also to say it's now underperforming, we should be biasing uh, short and square. And that is exactly what we've done. And that's why things change. So um, a couple of uh, pushbacks on some people that probably don't understand trading and shouldn't be traders. And I know most of you are um, way better than that. Uh, and you understand uh, the principles of things moving on. There was a couple of other things that I wanted to bring in. And these are, the, the, this is the killer the killer, killer, killer reason, and uh, it still hasn't been successfully added to the thread, so I'll check it out on my profile. And that's the USD.T. The USD.T. By the way, while we're passing Charlie's uh, tweet here, three years so far in a row bearish. Never happened before. You had two years twice. And they were only slightly. Whoops, that's a bit of a fat cokey. Grab the we won minus 1.3 and minus 2.3. That's next to nothing. Two years then, minus 2.1 and minus 2.6. Not great numbers, but they're still small. That is minus 4.4, minus 17.8, and you're bearish again today. You're, and the year's not finished, and it goes low, is my prediction, and you could get a fourth and a fifth year. Debt goes down. Interest rates go up. It is wrecked. It is all over the place. It's worthless. It's going to zero. You will reset on this. It is not going to take 40 years for it to happen. It took 40 years to build the Ponzi. You go up on the escalator. You smash down on the elevator with a broken cord. That is how it's going to happen. This will take you into reset. Hear me now. And you need to learn money management. Okay. Uh, barking it out loud and proud here. So here is some of the charts. Uh, as I say, we discussed this far more detail in premium, but here I warned about this inverted head and shoulder in here for the pattern on the USD tether. So where will the crypto go? It'll go to tether. We'll talk about this green line in a minute. Bang. There's your target. It goes slowly until it suddenly goes very fast. Done. That is your spill right there for all your cryptos. XRP, Bitcoin, XLM, the lot. They're all part of a category. They all got sold off. Everyone ran into Tether. They didn't like it. And guess what? It's bad news because it's taking you closer to the green line where after a rest and a wind up and a pause and everyone gets sleepy and wants to get back into crypto because, you know, it was just an overreaction. We're all quite cool with the new normal now and all of that. And there's a bit of a recession. OK, some people are having a hard time, but never mind. I seem relatively OK. Everything's broadly fine. The macro of that chart is awful. Let's see if we've got it here. 
there it goes. So, we've shown this one. And I showed this before it got above this 1.7, the 7.5 uh, percentage. I started showing this. The only person who shows you tether dominance in the crypto realm, right here on this channel, where we really set out to try help people. And let me tell you, you're getting much more in the community, but you don't want to. You don't want to spend that money. We get a lot of guys on the calls that say, oh, I've been doing it for free. Uh, I learn a lot from Francis. I know everything. I know everything. I've seen it. I know why. I just check to confirm now, you know. I've got it all. And I'm like, okay. And then they come on board, the odd one or two, and they go, oh, okay. Okay. So, welcome. Good luck if you're getting for free. I do this to help people. But you aren't getting. You aren't getting it timelessly as much as you could. You aren't getting the full detail. You aren't getting the advanced segments. You're seeing a little bit of what I come to conclusions. You're not picking up the skill to the full level. You don't understand most of the things to the level you should. And this is a concern. This is a concern. It's not super beautiful, but it's a concern. This is a concern. This is a bloated second impulse, but it really squared up and supported there. It was not going lower. The tether factor was not going lower. And then it came up under this for the head there. And it's not going lower. And now, actually, this chart has changed. And I'm here to show you what happened. Because this I drew last night at 2.45 in the morning. But I've drawn this chart four or five times with it all much lower well before it happened. So there's no after timing calling here. If you want true insight, you've got to find the people that see things happening before they happen. That don't do lagging indicators. That are only focused on leading indicators. Then you get to see insight. Insight. There's a difference between insights and saying what happened after it's happened. Um, so let's go see if we can find that USD teller, um, tether. You can see here at 26.6. This is a horrible pee off the roof. And you could bleed out overnight for a deeper dip. And you might still make that 25k. Uh, that is an absolute... Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a terrible candle, that. There's no way of spinning it. And the problem is what comes out of that. It's very hard to get good things to come out of that. That's Bitcoin. Don't forget what happened to the people who didn't take profits on XRP. We'll cover that next. USTT dominance. That's it. Now it looks different to you, doesn't it? Who called that before that happened? Who called that before it happened? Who said you're in trouble down here? Who, after it went up here, and it then went down, said, don't worry, it's going to come back around, it's, the danger is still not gone. Who did it before? There's not a single crypto channel that is a leading indicator for dangerous moments. This is a run out of crypto, friends. This is a run out of crypto, and it gets worse when you run here. While I'm here, let me put my alerts. My alerts was firing up while I was eating lunch. First meal of the day, 3.45 today. Watching, watching, watching my computer. Ping, ping, ping. After my video had debuted, a day, you know, a day later, uh, and people watched it and puked on it about changing direction. Not everybody, by the way. It's just one or two, but I, it's, it's the lowest common denominator that I remind because some of the people might have been thinking and just had better self-discipline. But why did you change? Why did you change your view? You said 42.5. You said that. Yes, if it got on and got on with it. But it didn't. It didn't. And after a certain amount of time and the macro changes, that means it's stuck. That means there's a problem. Now it's a sitting flipping duck. Now it gets shot up its backside. That's what happens in the world. Welcome to a dynamic world. You're not ready for trading and investment if you can't get that. So this is a real threat. Will it trigger? We don't know. We don't know. But if this crosses the highs over here, we have a serious problem. And that is in and around the 8.53 uh, level for me. And if you're smart and you can have that for free, you can go put on 8.53 alert and you can see if that happens. I suspect you could even pull back a little bit and everything will feel fine for a while. But be warned, the next series of events triggers that you're going to 12 and a half percent and can i say we don't have one target for that we have many so here's all the people going oh, 
okay, yes, I know how to do this. I know how to do this. I've done this. I've watched all your videos. You know, you give too much away. I've worked it all out. I've freebied myself. Aren't I clever? You know, that's a, po a poverty mindset. I actually always, where I learn stuff from people, look to spend money with them. Because if I can learn stuff uh, free uh, from them, I do it. Uh, and then I will definitely say, uh, A, thank you. And B, uh, I want to learn more. Uh, and I want to and I want to get it sooner. What does it mean? So let's just show you a couple of other pattern structures of why this could be a problem for crypto So here you go. You've got a bit of a W-ing bottom here. So put the lights on here uh, So this is fat we go fat cokey. It's irregular But that is kind of a structure in there like that. It's got a tiny bit of a extra shoulder there This is a concern. Where does that target take you? Damn, I've not left enough headroom in there. There you go. Where does that target take you? It takes you through 11 and a half in terms of that. Where do these take you? Uh, to 12 and a half. 11 and a half, 12 and a half, 12 12.6, 12.8. 12.64, 12.69. A lot of targets. This is from the same structure. It also generates the 11.39. So we've got not just one, but many. Plus we got this little reversal. It's already performed. It only took one session and it was done on a small level. You're now on the higher side, more likely to break the green line than the red line. We were calling it when it was closer to the red line because of patterns. Patterns lead. Everything else you do are wasting your time. RSI's waste of the time. I just every time I see, and there's lots of leaders with paid for accounts with RSI's because they get a lot, they can sound super quick, clever by saying, and the RSI did that, you see, and that confirmed, and that confirmed. And it's like, it's like I tied a chain around your leg and you dragged a dead dog everywhere you walked with you. And I said, the dog said confirmed that you're going in the right direction as well. I mean, it is absolute idiocy. And I, I call it a standard placebo test. Every single clown that is a paid uh, influencer or teacher that carries on with MACDs and RSIs. I look at the lagging dog. I may as well just follow the path of the dog to try and work out where the human's going. Only it's a long chain and it'll take me a little bit longer because when he goes around corners, instead of following the human that is leading, uh, I'd see that the dog's still going on the other side of the building before it bends around the corner, the dead dog that he's dragging with him. Don't drag dead dogs. Do things that give you advance warnings for future price behavior that lead, not lag. Volume patterns. There's very few. Yield curve inversions for recessions. Guess what? We've been right about debt. We were right about debt from the 2020s. We were right about the recession. It's been inverted for ages. It's getting worse. We will be right about debt never getting back to the valuations of COVID or anything before ever again. Watch me and on balance of probabilities. And it is not about ego. It is about facts, hard facts that people need to see. So if those rates are going higher, what will interest rate spikes do? You're going to get a potential push up in the dollar. It is a real risk. It will hurt crypto until they're ready to unleash it. Everything will deflate. They want a technological hollowing out of the middle classes so that they can have lords and serfs again in their amazing kibbutz bolshevik communism with the digitized techno israeli crowd running and telling you when you to eat shit and how high you must jump that is where you are in this world so you need to get smart you need to protect your capital you need to start paying attention and watch out what's coming and this to 12.5%, 12.63% move on the tether will not be good if it happens. It's not guaranteed to happen. We're just talking about an, an inverted uh, head and shoulder that was supposed to run for uh, 40Ks that ran into headwinds. Things changed, lost some of its momentum. Now the markets change. It's probably going to form the same pattern in the opposite direction. That's called adaptability. That's called trading. That's called plotting a course and then dealing with the bad weather that comes along the way if it shows up. That is called real 
real cognizance and learning. Anyway, I may not full on rant today. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you. Most of you are smart and really awesome and I appreciate you in every single way. Hit the like and the shares to understand better. That is why crypto has gone down. And can I say the 12.63% if it occurs, which will be on balance of probabilities, it will be higher once it triggers the, the number and the level I already gave you of 8.53 will be devastating for crypto. Because you saw how much Bitcoin fell and how much XRP fell with a move from 7.5 to 7.95. You've roughly had 0.4, maybe 0.45 of a move on the tether. What will that do to Bitcoin if Bitcoin falls from 30 grand to 26 and a half grand on half a percent? How much does it fall in a run from 8 percent to 12 0.63 another 4.6 4.7% how much will it do well you saw how much it did on the half you can work it out for yourself but that could indeed be that could indeed be not eight to maybe nine times larger a loss so if you've lost three thousand dollars today on or two thousand on uh, crypto you could lose nine times or eight times that on the downside 16k bring you back down to the lows new w bottom and then when it starts rallying we'll call a reversal again because that's what we do and if it triggers properly we'll say it's high good probability of making its w bottom target and we'll be back there again but we won't ride the downside we will have more tokens buying cheap again because we will manage our money and that's what all the people that argue with me about hex having sold hex out 37 cents 21 cents and got the hell out and got my money out having pledged for pulse and sold the whole boom bang shooting much on launch when there was the most fomo for people that never got in that i got to make money on both those tokens whilst everyone else now is crying and is underwater because the things that are at risk could happen have happened that's called forward looking that's called being futurist. That's called scenario casting. You live in today, you have the fullness of the day, and you have one eye on the world tomorrow and what's likely to happen as a result of people's behaviors today. Outrage marketing and having a US-based YouTube channel is punting your... Uh, token and doing pumper mentals for your token will attract SEC interest. They don't care what word salad you've created to say yours wasn't a security and everybody didn't intend to make pro uh, profits. It's predictable. It can be foresawn. You chose not to see it. You chose to rationalize your way past it. That is what happened to Hex and Pulse Guy. So let me just say the seeds of today are what you end up sowing tomorrow. You actually have an insight in what's going to happen tomorrow. You just have to look more closely at the soil, the ground, and the seeds that you're using, how much water it's getting, and you will get an idea of what kind of crop is coming, if anything at all. Uh, and there's plenty of facts, in, uh, and you just have to dedicate your mind to being both forward-looking as well as money management protecting. No loss is worth taking. That You do not hodl. You do not hodl anything except your own family, your wife, etc., Hold on there. Uh, don't hollow hodl investments. Uh, that is not money management 101. You do not become a believer or married as some people. We married. We're not divorcing Richard. It's not a case of divorcing him. Love him from afar. We all like what he's aimed to achieve. We like the guy, etc. But that's changed. And, that's, and I'm just using him as an example. There's countless of this. The thinking is wrong. Your thinking is wrong. You have to be defensive. Defences win championships in every sport I know. You need an attack, and an attack can win you a game. Defences win you championships. Letting, not letting the others score is one of the biggest things. That's how you win, guys. Uh, don't take hits. Don't take hits. Don't let them put one over you. Okay, till next time, we'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening, and uh, it'll be tomorrow that you're watching this. Uh, don't be surprised if there's rallies. Don't be surprised if the mood music is, don't worry guys, it's all going to be fine and all of this. Uh, you have real threats out there on crypto. Okay, till next time, bye for now.